pantry needs help. The food pantry is serving more guests than ever before, and there are no indications this situation will not continue into the future. The food pantry is by far the most meaningful ministry that Royster Church has at this time. Bill Brown and the current volunteers have been performing masterfully during the increases in volume of food distributed and individuals served more than 800 individuals in March. But now Bill needs another individual to help Monday through Thursday morning when the food pantry is open. If you can help on one or more of those mornings, please contact Bill or James Gregg ASAP through Louise in the church office. Thank you for your support. Psalms. The Royster Bible Reading Group has finished the New Testament and will now begin reading through the Psalms. We continue to meet on the third Wednesday of the month to discuss some of the passages that have enlightened or troubled us during our reading. If you're interested in joining us, please let Brian or Karen Roberts know and we will get you a schedule. Two sides of the same coin. Crystal Webster is leading a fun discussion group looking at various topics in today's world and how different Christians are reacting to them. We'd love to have more participants. We meet on the second and fourth Wednesdays, via Zoom, at 6.30 p.m. For more information, contact Crystal or the church office. Smiles needed. As our church moves towards more normalization of our worship services in the coming weeks, we find ourselves in need of ushers on Sunday mornings for the 11 a.m. service. If you would like to find out what it entails to be an usher, please contact Donna Dylan Stockberger and she will be glad to talk with you. Looking ahead, Pentecost Sunday is May 23rd. Royster is planning to have a fellowship opportunity in the courtyard between the gathering and 11 a.m. worship. This fellowship opportunity will provide a time for the two congregations to get to know one another. Sunday, May 30th, combined outdoor worship at Church of the Ascension at 11 a.m. Please bring your own lawn chair.
This morning is Good Shepherd Sunday, and we are in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come again to your ancient word, seeking the inspiration of your living word. May your living word move in, through, and even in spite of the words of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. The French philosopher Michel Foucault says that the shepherd image is a dominant image in Western culture. We tend to think of it as an image that has gone by the wayside, something for the Middle East, something for a time gone by. But Foucault says it is a dominant image in our imagination even today. Andrew Root says, we have the world we do concerned about law and truth because of the way shepherd power has shaped our imaginations. We have the world we do, a world concerned about law and truth because of shepherd power. That's not the way we tend to think, but he is talking about what Michel Foucault sussed out last century. He says, Root says, most often we assume Greco, the Greco-Roman world as the birthplace of our societal and political lives. Athens and Rome gave us democracy, senates, and public debates after all. But Foucault thinks this view is a mistake. Rather, the fundamental DNA of the power of the modern state is in the deserts of the Mediterranean East. It is not the robed philosopher with his skilled rhetoric who is central, but the dusty shepherd attentively tending a flock. I don't know about you, but when I learned about democracy, we went straight to the Greeks. <laughs> when I learned about war, it's traced back to the Romans. That's where I thought the seat of power was, in that, Rome and Greece. But Foucault has, says it's different than that. Here's Foucault. What is it then that characterizes this power of the shepherd? What are its specific features? I think we can summarize them in the following way. The shepherd's power is not exercised over a territory but by definition over a flock, and more exactly over the flock in its movement from one place to another. The shepherd's power is essentially exercised over a multiplicity in movement. The Greek god is a territorial god with his privileged place, his town or temple. The Hebrew god, on the other hand, is the god moving from place to place, the god who wanders. The presence of the Hebrew God is never more intense and visible than when his people are on the move. And when in, in his people's wanderings, 
in the movement that takes them from the town, the prairies and pastures, he goes ahead and shows his people the direction they must follow. This, Foucault says, is the basis of our Western power structure. He says that it is the pastoral power of care. The shepherd is responsible to lead the flock. And this is the dominant way we see power. That doesn't make sense, does it? But think about it. Think about the world we are in right now. We ask of our political leaders that they be shepherds. We don't do this directly. We don't voice it. The further our culture moves away from church, the, the harder it is for us to even phrase that. But think about the what we ask of our presidents. We don't want them to be overtly loyal to victory or wealth or power or territory. We want them to be responsible, to lead the flock, to lead with the power of care. Ask yourself, not talking about substance, only style. Ask yourself if Donald Trump's presidency would have been different if he could have acted more like a shepherd. Ask yourself if Joe Biden would be getting more negative press if he didn't step into the role of shepherd. You can start to see the difference, can't you? That ours is not a world based on the power in Greece and Rome, but of the shepherd leading the people with care. But we're Americans. And we're Protestants. We don't believe in a hierarchy, do we? We believe that everyone has been created equal. We believe in the priesthood of all believers. And so it is right to think that we expect a shepherd's attitude from each other and even from ourselves. This is in our DNA. We think about power in terms of wealth and terror, or territory and money, but beating in the heart of each of us is a knowledge that power is in the shepherd. In fact, I would argue that sanctification, where the Holy Spirit makes us more like Christ, is making us more like a shepherd. If Christ is the good shepherd, and we are being made more like him. We are, on a daily basis, being drawn towards shepherding. The epistle lesson in today's lectionary is 1 John verses, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. Listen to this and the power of the shepherd. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. First line, right out the gate, the call to be a shepherd. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe the name of, the son, of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us, the spirit of a shepherd. The spirit of a shepherd beats in each of us, calling us to the power of love and care for each other. Calling us 
as we are sanctified to be more like the Good Shepherd. But that's not the world that we're living in. The world that we live in, as it gets further and further from the truth, can't even understand the metaphor anymore. And as modernity comes and goes and presses in upon us, things change. Charles Taylor, the Canadian philosopher, called it the ethic of authenticity. He said this ethic, this ethic of authenticity, asserts that every human being has the right to define himself or herself what it means for him or her to be human. That's what our culture tells us. Be who you want to be. Follow your passions. Follow your dreams. In the West, Taylor says, the sources of religion, family, clan, and even country can no longer tell you who you are. You decide. And so we have a culture that tells us we decide who we are going to be. And that culture thinks that it's coming out of Rome and Greece and power and wealth and victory and all of these things. And yet there's a God on the other hand that says, I am calling you to be something else and that something else is a shepherd. And even though our culture no longer understands God, even though our culture walks away from church, from family, from clan, and even nation, even though all of that still what bubbles up underneath us is an understanding of power as shepherding, an understanding of the substance difference in presidents who shepherd and presidents who choose bald power. We don't get away from it. There's a dissonance that resides within us. There's a struggle within us. As the world tells us one thing, and our hearts are drawn in another. I feel it. You feel it. Presidents feel it. Everyone feels it. And I don't have an answer for it. But what I do have is the ability to lift it to your conscience that in a world based on power and wealth, Greece and Rome, God is sanctifying you, calling your heart to something else. Feel that tension and know it comes from God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Friends, shepherds, go now into the world understanding that you are being drawn into a power of love, that what is being born in you through sanctification is an increasing desire to shepherd your family, your neighborhood, your community, and your church. And may the Lord remain between me and thee while we are apart, each from the other. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh.